Coming up tonight, in a violent 12-hour span, two men are gunned down in the Capitol overnight, while others injured. Plus, the government is forging ahead with its free Wi-Fi in the park project. And in our arts and entertainment segment, our Jean Joseph goes muggling with Bahamian Trey. Weekend edition. Good evening, all. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Megan Shepard. This weekend has had a seemingly violent start with two homicides only 12 hours apart taking place last night and this morning. But are the two connected? Our Marlene and Leonard was on the scene for both and has more in this story. The murder of a man presumed to be in his 50s on Kenwood Avenue this morning makes two murders just 12 hours apart in the Capitol this weekend. Chief Superintendent Michael Johnson, officer in charge of the Criminal Investigation Department, providing details on the scene. Shortly after 10 a.m., the deceased was at a residence conversing with several other family members when the occupants of a small gray vehicle, which we believe is a Japanese model, pulled up. Two males exited this vehicle. Both were armed with handguns, and they opened fire on the victims fatally wounding him. Chief Superintendent Johnson says the assailants then got back into their vehicle and fled the scene. When asked if police feel the two homicides may be connected, Johnson tells us... That is one line of inquiry that we would be looking at, um, but it's too early at this time to say that they are connected, but that definitely would be an avenue that we would take. This comes shortly after a shooting off Soldier Road left a man critically injured and a 26-year-old man dead shortly after 10 o'clock last night. Chief Superintendent Michael Johnson gave us the details on the scene last night. Through an unnamed road off Soldier Road, two males were standing in the street when they were approached by a lone gun, two gunmen who opened fire on them, shooting them multiple times about the body. One male was deceased on scene, the other male was taken to hospital by private vehicle. His condition at this time is unknown. The gunman left this area on foot and he jumped into a dark, small vehicle, which we believe is a Japanese model. As for an update on the condition of the other young man shot last night. Well, he is, his condition, uh, as we know it so far this morning, is stable at this time. Um, um, but we are still seeking to speak with him as soon as we are available to do that. Chief Superintendent Johnson continues to appeal to the public for any details they feel may aid the investigation. These murders bring the country's murder count to 87 for the year. Reporting for our news, I'm Marlena Leonard. Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernander, the guest on our TVs on the record with Jerome Sawyer this past week. The top cop says that one of his main priorities is the prevention of crime. Fernander says that since assuming his new post, a number of organizations have met with him, all with the same goals. He says he believes they would be more impactful together. I believe if we bring that under one umbrella, all of the strategies and all of the uh, programs uh, that they have to assist, if we bring all of that together and line up under the urban renewal program, I believe we will get better results. We have to look at the bigger picture, not I. You got to look at the bigger picture coming together with all of those programs so that we could put strategies in place to assist all of the crimes that are happening right before us in our communities. Mm -hmm. And by so many young people. Young people. So we are trying to uh, target the young people within the communities to try to steer them away uh, from the, uh, the guys who will try to recruit. Commissioner Fernander says that a lot of young men today see police as enemies and lack respect for those tasked with serving and protecting. He says under his leadership, a new multi-agency task force will be created to tackle crime, particularly gun violence. You're talking about the defense force, you're talking about immigration, uh, you're talking about uh, uh, the prison, uh, you're talking about customs and we have our U.S. partner who will join us with this task force. And our focus is because we know that most of the crime that are happening, the individuals are using firearms as the weapon of choice. 
and we don't manufacture firearms, and it continues. We are wide open, and they continue to come in. And you know, the uh, we know that uh, right next door to us in the U.S. in Florida, uh, they are coming. They are coming through. So this task force will be focused on the smuggling of weapons that are getting into our country. Meantime, nearly $40 million in renewable energy infrastructure is on the way for two major islands. The news coming hours ago as a multi-million dollar microgrid solar system was being commissioned on Ragged Island. Berthony McDermott, who was on the island for the official ceremony, tells us how this massive investment in infrastructure will help family island residents. The Davis administration will invest more than $36 million in renewable infrastructure on Abaco and East Grand Bahama. The announcement by the Prime Minister came during a commissioning ceremony on Friday for a nearly $5 million microgrid solar system on Ragged Island. The focus of this investment in Abaco will include an $18 million investment for the restoration of electricity services and rehabilitation of physical infrastructure damaged by Hurricane Dorian. We will also invest 4.5 million in the installation of five microgrids in the East Grand Bahama area. The Prime Minister also detailing a $14.2 million investment of a 25 megawatt battery storage system at the Blue Hills Power Station in New Providence and says plans to assess family islands for the installation of solar energy will get underway soon. We intend to go to the far-flung islands and communities, communities like, like um, Selena Point uh, in Auckland, uh, uh, Rumkey. As for the newly minted microgrid for Ragged Island, the Prime Minister says the commissioning means more resilience in the face of future hurricanes while providing greener energy, as microgrids can help keep the lights on even when the central grid is down. BPL officials saying the 21,000 gallons of fuel used to supply the island has been reduced to 9,000. Works and Utilities Minister Alfred Sears calling it the first step in the reduction of the country's carbon footprint. Today... We celebrate the first step in a journey of national sustainability, res res resilience, and the reduction of the carbon footprint of the Bahamas. Ragged Island was ravaged by Hurricane Irma back in 2017, leaving it uninhabitable. The former administration announced plans at the time to turn the island into a green space, but that didn't happen. And now, Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper says the commissioning signifies the rebuilding of the island. Ragged Island, this is a signal that we open for business and we're ready to go. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. The Office of the Prime Minister and the Ministry of Economic Affairs officially launched the first of several social initiatives planned. Today's initiative, Bahamas Park Connect, is geared at providing free Wi-Fi access in constituency parks throughout the country. Our news team was able to visit Kennedy Park in Bamboo Town and spoke to area MP Patricia DeVoe. She said the initiative was one of the promises made in its blueprint for change. For me, it is an everlasting being because I've had a lot of discontent in my community. We've had a lot of persons that were just financially strapped and internet access was something that they really couldn't afford. So I'm excited about this. So it gives us a digitalization to the world. So it's a transformational change strategy, I should say, by the government that I applaud. And I just want to say thank you for, to them for making this initiative happen. I am excited because Bamboo Town is a part of this pilot project and historically, we are one of the first to launch today. Delmaro Duncan, Cable Bahamas' Director of Sales and Innovation, shared why it was important for the company to jump on board with the government to make this initiative possible. It is important for us to try and close that connectivity gap, uh, particularly in the areas that are less fortunate, uh, particularly within and New Providence and our family of islands. So when the government approached us uh, with the project, um, it, was, it was overwhelming because at least it feels good to do a project that has such a strong meaning and can make such a positive impact within our communities. Other parks where the free Wi-Fi was launched include the New Bites Regatta site in Cat Island, Harbor Islands Park in North Eleuthera, and in New Providence, Centerville Park, Bogan Villa Park in South Beach, Garden Hills Park, Sunshine Park in Golden Gates, among others.
Still to come on our news, social services minister says the marital rape discussion is back on the table. And for the third time, hands for hunger feeds residents of Eleuthera. That's coming up when the weekend edition returns. our news weekend edition welcome back social services minister obi Wilshkum giving an update on an upcoming meeting where marital rape will be the topic of discussion we should be meeting uh the um, on the 27th 28th i think that's the date that we've set aside uh we're hoping to bring uh, pastors from around the country because what you don't want to happen is we have a nasa centric position as opposed to a, a national position the minister goes on to detail the other voices expected in the meetings aside from religious leaders. We can't constantly push the can down the road. We, we can't do that. We have to take a position and the position must be explained. And so we'll bring the, lead, uh, the legal arm into to explain. Uh, we'll hear the church's position. Uh, we'll hear the uh, advocates uh, for and against. Uh, and then of course we'll arrive at a consensus. Global supply chain issues will not impact the spiny lobster industry's ability to distribute their catch internationally, according to Marine Resources Minister Clay Sweeting. Sweeting says so far it seems the season, which started August 1st, is going well. It don't seem to be an issue and um, it seems that the lobster season has started off fairly well. Um, continue to monitor the price and hopefully uh, the price stays up and hopefully they have another successful season like they did last year. Sweeting also telling reporters that the administration has no plan to repeal the Fisheries Act. Bahamian fishermen have long complained of foreigners marrying Bahamians to benefit from the local fishing industry. While he says it's not on the agenda at this time, Sweeting says the administration has other initiatives on the table. I think fisheries is, is one of those sectors that um, should be protected for Bahamians. I've always been vocal in that regard. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those sectors that uh, you don't put the fisheries in the water. It's not like agriculture, where you can um, take foreign direct investment and you can grow 50 acres. You can only have access to what God's provided in the ocean. So it's, it's, it's one of those um, sectors that's uh, provided to be a challenge over the years. Um, we have a lot of other things that we're trying to do in regards to food security that we're being very aggressive with. A local nonprofit organization that has made it a mission to tackle food security, recently distributing food parcels to two Eleuthera communities. Hands for Hunger volunteers and executives traveling to North Eleuthera for the third time this year, giving out boxes of food to residents in Harbor Island and Spanish Wells. Hands for Hunger Executive Director Keisha Ellis. Today is one of a first step of many towards helping bring food security to all behaviors. The food boxes contain important staple items like tuna, soups, peanut butter, canned fruits, pasta, sauces, rice, cereal, and juices. Okay, okay, okay. You got okay. them all, all colors. Oh, oh you, exactly. You got them, you got them, you know. <laughs> Chocolate, you got them, mocha. Hands for Hunger partnered with the Cable Bahamas Group, as well as community leaders from the Royal Bahamas Police Force, the Kiwanis Club of Harbor Island, the Spanish Wells Methodist Church, and local government officials. And stay with us when our news comes back from the break. One police officer said he is pushing for harsher, more specific laws to deter drinking and driving. And one millennial has a come to Jesus moment. And right after that, the wheels of life start to turn for him. No sneak preview. Stay tuned. Those details when the weekend edition comes back.
officer in charge of the Road Traffic Department, Chief Superintendent David Lockhart, addressing drunk driving concerns in a University of the Bahamas Responsible Drinking Forum. Lockhart says if an officer suspects that a driver is drunk, the person must give consent for a blood or urine sample, which makes the job of an investigator quite difficult. The officer says he is presently pushing for the gazetting of a specific law. In 2016, the Road Traffic uh, Act was amended uh, to give more power to the police and to make it an arrestable offense if I suspect you to be under the influence of alcohol and if you refuse to give me the intimate sample, you can be arrested. That law, from it's been enacted in uh, 2016 has not yet been gazetted and because it's not gazetted it's unenforceable. Repairs to the Kendall GL Isaacs Gymnasium should be complete by next Friday. That's according to Youth Sports and Culture Minister Mario Boleg. Our Marlena Leonard has more on the story including what the holdups were on the renovations progress as well as the events on the horizon for the gymnasium. Last week's Pastors vs. Politicians basketball game brought smiles to many in the community, but it also raised questions for some keen-eyed onlookers who noticed the ongoing renovations happening in the Kendall G.L. Isaacs National Gymnasium. First person that score is, is going to is, is going to Oh, who scores first? That's the one, the guy who never scores first. He did the life. Hollis Reed. The gym has been home to many big league events in the past three decades, but over that period it has also seen its fair share of wear and tear, something that prevented the gym from hosting certain events this summer. Minister of Youth Sports and Culture Mario Boleg gives an explanation for the delayed repairs. We did a poor job of, of stopping some of the events that were in there so we can have it completed for Summer Thunder. The most pressing issues at the moment seem to be water leaks from the roof and malfunctioning air conditioning units. But the minister says these issues should be resolved shortly. The repairs for that building is expected to be completed by next week, Friday. The senior men's national team will be playing Venezuela on the 24th of this month. And so uh, the contract is working over time. Uh, I've been there last night again up to 9 o'clock. He was still in there working. The minister also says repairs and renovations are being made in the gym's bathrooms, interior areas, VIP rooms, and entrance in hopes to return the venue to the standard allowing it to be a place that brings pride to Bahamians. I think the Bahamian people have a great appreciation for the facility. I am assure you that when they get in there on the 24th to watch the Bahamas play Venezuela, the roof uh, leaking will be fixed, the AC will be fixed. With these repairs made, this would allow the government facility to benefit from bookings it may have otherwise been missing out on since the gym has started having issues. Reporting for our news, I'm Marlena Leonard. Thanks, Marlena. 31-year-old Terrence Roberts spent his summers visiting the beautiful island of Exuma, where his uncle owns a farm and the famous pig roast on Stalking Island. He says it was just a few short years ago when he had his come-to-Jesus moment, and that's when the wheels began turning to birth Berkshire Bahamas Farm. <music> When we first got started, um, we got some pigs from Gladstone Road Agricultural Center in Nassau, BRAC, and um, they assisted us with getting started. And from there, we started breeding, crossbreeding the Berkshires, but we also went to the U.S. and we brought in some Berkshire boars, the male pigs, and we're able to breed the full breed Berkshires now. So we have, we'll have two types of product. Currently, we have pigs, um, we have chickens and ducks. And the name of the farm, Berkshire Bahamas Farms, derived from the Berkshire pig. Berkshire Bahamas sits on 15 acres of land with roughly 200 animals. Robert says as the demand is growing in the community, there are plans for expansion. He says while doing his market research, he discovered there was a desire for high quality product. And now his product is sold in local food stores and served in local restaurants. A feeling he says is indescribable. I found that that should be our target market. So once those relationships were formed, um, it's great to see when your logo or the name is in their menu. And then we got a call about a month ago from two restaurants, um, one in Nassau, so at Palm Key, they have the pink octopus. I got a call from them and they wanted to try the product and they actually turned it into sausages that they had on their menu. And then afterwards, we got a call from um, the Dunmore Hotel in Harbor Island 
So being able to sit back and take it all. And when you're just in the thick of it, a lot of times you don't think of it like, well, this is what I'm doing. This is the goal. But when it's actually happening, happening and you sit back, it's like, wow, this this is really taking off. The farm was officially established in May of 2019, just months before Hurricane Dorian wreaked havoc on the island of Grand Bahama and contaminated the water systems. He considers this one of the most challenging times of his journey. When we figured out what the salinity of the water did to the animals, being able to make those adjustments, treat the water, test the water, um, it could be pretty rough. I mean, you know, you have those days as an entrepreneur, where it's like, yeah, this doesn't make sense. I don't know if I can do this anymore. Um, but when you sit back and you think about exactly why you're doing it, and this is actually bigger than me, it's bigger than my family that put it together. It's really about our country and being able to help each other um, feed ourselves. He notes that as an entrepreneur, you are often required to wear many hats within the business. And while he looks back on his growth with pride, he shares this as his career highlight. Being able to employ Bahamians, you know, people of your own kind and, see them flourish and grow and feel comfortable in a work environment where they can go home and feel proud that they're able to take money home to their family. So I'd say that's the biggest highlight and takeaway. And, you know, there's so much more to come. And here's his advice for other aspiring entrepreneurs. Find something that you're passionate about, something that you love. It's not like getting up and going to work. You know, it's going up there to solve a problem that you're passionate about. So if it's something in the community that you want to do, you can't look at it as just about you. It's who else does it affect? And coming up after the break, the weather forecast is on the way. And our Jean Joseph is muggling through with arts and entertainment. That's coming up when the weekend edition returns. And I'm not talking about the Soka song. Well, not today anyway. I'm actually talking about the weather. Let's see what's in store for us over the next few days. Trey caught the music bug in high school and he's been muggling ever since through the good times and the bad. Our Jean Joseph sits down with the artist to hear more about his life and the creative pursuits. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Bohemian Trey, recording artist, actor, and this is your entertainment segment. We here at OEU Studios. Bohemian Trey, the recording artist and actor, well known for his breakout 2015 hit, Mugglin, continues to create and entertain crowds despite the many harsh circumstances that have come his way. Public figures experience many of the things the average person does, and Trey is no different. Losing his father during Hurricane Dorian, compounded with the pandemic, took a toll on the young star, but he says he's in a much better place now. I'm in this space now where I'm trying to understand or become more emotionally intelligent to realize that it's okay to cry, to realize it's okay to have these healthy outlets of being able to express yourself. I try to be able to use music to do that, to say, you know, let me put all these things I have to say in my music. The young artist says he is still coming to grips with it all and he has poured his emotions into his music, voice acting and stage performances and believes that his experiences are not in vain. This is what I believe my life is supposed to be. All these things that I've been through already, like music, this this me, this supposed to be me. Trey says he hopes to translate all he has learned and experienced into more success. He says he's looking forward to bringing more of his best to you soon and says the sound will be familiar with some creative spins. Musically where I'm at is you still for sure get that be that authentic Bahamian um, dialect. You get the whole 
bohemian vibe for sure when it comes to my lyrics you will see different experiments when it comes to the sound. The artist says he has his sights set on taking his sound to the world, and he does not believe he needs to compromise his unique Bahamian flavor to attain international fame. I believe that you could be your authentic Bahamian self and promote that to the world. And once you do it right, the world will be at your fingertips. People will see that light shining from, a, from afar. With new music produced by Sammy Starr, Padrino, and others, Trey says he is excited to connect with his fans again. This new song is gonna be out this month. How they go? That's all I got to say about it right now. But follow me on TikTok too. I've been tripping my cell phone on TikTok here and there. Fame in T-R-A-E. Uh, yeah, man, you're gonna see much more like high quality content from Bahamian Trey very soon in so many different ways. Just stay tuned. In the meantime, take a listen to one of his recent releases, Back in Time. For our news, arts and entertainment, I am Gene Joseph. Enjoy. What's hey, the when they run this song? Cause it's been too long since the big tone. Drop, drop. And when they come, we got the place on. Lock, lock. Don't want no problem, we don't want no gunshot. Nah, we in the trees, feeling kites in the breeze. Delicacies of living life on the keys. Stepping on the box, so I bobbing and weave. TK. Recipe seven years gone too soon, daddy gone too soon. Remember that time when I get that news. Yeah. Thinking to myself, why life so short? I was trying to ask God, I was so confused. No. This one for you, this one for blessing. Life got losses, life got lessons. Yeah. Gotta represent, gotta keep weapon. I'm a go boy, but just for the record. Yeah, let me tell you what you need, girl. What you need is a man like. Thanks, Gene. Definitely looking forward to muggling to more Bahamian Trey music in the future. And we want you to come back tomorrow night and muggle with us on the weekend edition. But for now, that's a wrap. We thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.